that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Was I thinking about this type of scenario? It's usually it's, not 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 at this uh, at this level. You know, namespace namespace seems to me like really uh, really low level. Yeah, it, I mean, it's all all we've got in native Cal uh, native yeah yeah native Kubernetes. The multi-tenancy group. There's a lot of active discussion about this. Huh. about so like op openshift wraps the namespace in something called a project and so normal users can create a project which the controller sets up like you know, some of the world bindings and and security policies along with the namespace okay there, I think, are other ideas of somewhat like that. Then, of course, people always suggest should there be hierarchical namespaces, or do yeah. you need some other kind of concept or like ownership of a namespace concept with an org? There's a lot of lot of action active discussion in it. I'm trying to think if they had notes. At KubeCon, there was a that was a big discussion. Okay. Um, uh, so, have you heard anything new from the safe or? It's been pretty, <laughs> if I say boring, a lot of more discussion around the work, the working group itself. And like getting what the category is going to be called within the CNCF and how do we like what's where do you place different parts of the landscape okay so basically the governance stuff right yeah a lot of the and annoy the they named the SIG that they're proposing within the CNCF, governance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People are like, I understand the word like security is problematic, but <laughs> when you, even in this doc have a section labeled governance that means something totally different. Oh, my. Okay. Yeah, I reported about our meeting with Andrew and Spiffy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, people ask what kind of the pushback was and I think people understand that there has other people have seen some dislike of the use of x509 in that way like strongly or not strongly but they kind of put their nose up at it I think Let's see, then there was. Yeah, it's not too much of interest. Or of like direct policy related going forward. Okay. <clears throat> so another thing is, uh, I was like coming through you, uh, your material the other day and thinking thinking about you know uh, one of the 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 the, the core uh, argument uh, configuration versus policy and mm -hmm. we mentioned that one of the differences is that configuration doesn't have like expected uh, results right but policy does so with policy, usually you know what are the like uh, expected outcomes, so that you can do the uh, like the constraint and whatever. Um, so I was looking at Istio policy the other day. Mm -hmm. so mostly, uh, if I understand correctly, Istio doing the policy through the uh, the attribute, what they call the attribute. 
So it looks a lot like figuration to me. Mm -hmm. It's really not like the classical policy that you know do this and uh, you know you expect that uh, if you doesn't like observe that result then you should fail or whatever mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 pretty interesting so do you think uh, we should like impose a really hard uh like getting a uh like a barrier between the config and policy in this respect or you know one of so i guess what i have wrote is that config is a set of values that input as parameters to a, a system yeah whereas policy is a set of like rules or or a gov like a function that takes in a, a subject in some state and makes some other decision so configs like a parameter and policy is more like the function mm -hmm. so you would ex the reason i think one reason to try to differentiate even so you can configure policy and you can have policies on config so it is confusing <laughs> <laughs> one reason though is configuration is its own huge issue that people get into oh. and so like you we don't want to be associated with like configuration management. For instance. So can we can we think about policy as like a, a, a finite state machine? Um I'm trying I don't let me look up the formal definition so I can answer it. <laughs> so the thing is, if we want to draw uh, a hard line between configuration and policy, then we might start to, you know, calling out like uh, typical Kubernetes or is still like you are not really policy driven, you are just declarative config, <laughs> config <laughs> deployments. And for you to call yourself a policy driven uh, mechanism, at least you need to have like something like OPA, right? Like have a policy engine and uh, you need to define a set of like uh, uh, finite state machines that running constantly running and checks. There's a criteria and whether those criteria are fulfilled and if not, if there's punishment or <laughs> there. say that one more time so I can. <laughs> No, no. Uh, um, so uh, the the well, the main the main thing is uh, should we like different uh, differentiate config uh, versus policy? Is it really so, hard line, or we just uh, not take it so seriously? I think we can get away with not taking too hard of a line because I expect 
the pushback against config to be more general of that's not the Kubernetes way. But that is something we should raise, right? Because people, well, I think 90% of people usually uh, confuses configuration with policy. Yeah, I think I was and, asked about that at SAFE once. Yeah, and the other 10% of people misunderstood a policy with governance. <laughs> <laughs> Policy is sort of like the meta config. <laughs> the configuration helps you config the cluster. Okay, anyways. Um, so there's going to be a, a uh, KubeCon China around. Yeah. So uh, do you want me to like submit similar proposals? Yeah, sure. Okay. That sounds good. <laughs> Can't do that. I have no idea if I would get like, or what the funding for that looks like, but. <laughs> okay. <sighs> um, so uh, any chance you can uh, you invite the notary or tough people coming over? To talk about yeah. image, image security, yeah. Yeah. I can do that. Maybe next week. Um, I will try to like uh, do a summarization of all the invited talks. So, because basically we uh, we are trying to cover uh, like most of the aspects the policy related. Yeah. Yeah, so I will try to do a summarization on the uh, on the white paper, whatnot, and see if like anything uh, interesting comes out. So I think by far uh, some of the most interesting talk is the silly one, uh, the storage policy, right? Mm -hmm. That that that's oh. totally totally different from the networking policy. And also Spiffy, Spiffy. I think I need to revisit uh, some of the stuff. Oh, here was another one. I went to the New York Kubernetes meetup and it was kind of, the theme was about Spinnaker. Huh? And uh, so, the CI that, CD system or what? Yeah. So like from Google example, right? uh, it's a Netflix oh, no. originally. Okay. So for instance, this one place where it comes in, um, but there was some other kind of policy like things or parts as well as some places it seemed a little bit lacking and people had built custom tooling on top of it <laughs> not open source though okay and to roll up post okay this is interesting yeah that was interesting yeah yeah, these are policies. So they 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 they're asking like we define semant semantic for a criteria. Can these be fulfilled? If not, you know, this is pretty good. Scale to it. Pause. I'm sure it's an area that deployment in general where people care a lot about policies. Not <laughs> anything else. Uh, is the implementation also open source? It should be, right? Spinnaker is, yeah. I 
Other, another thing I'm thinking is in cloud and infra providers and their policy. So like AWS has its AI, IAM system. Yeah. I think Google has, well, it's most analogous to the, to the Kubernetes way. I don't know about a lot of the other clouds or like vSphere or OpenStack or what's Alibaba's cloud called? But that might be another area is sort of connecting the Kubernetes level stuff with the cloud provider. You mean for authentication or for policy? For policy in particular, there is the auth, and auth part of it, but for the policy, like for instance, network policy to enforce it interacts with at the networking layer to set that up, right? Yeah. And you also have your policies defining which nodes can connect to who or how. Yeah, I, I was thinking a bit actually with the OpenStack. Um, so the OpenStack uh, authentication system called Keystone. Yeah. Uh, they have the policy in code, so similar to Terraform. Um, they don't have this like OPA, uh, like auto band um, policy engine stuff. So. Yes, I was looking at OpenStack today as well. And there was also open attestation. Huh? Open attestation? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. They can see. So at the very bottom of the readme, it talks about set policies on OS images like trust and location, remote, and then evaluate policies before OpenStack oh. scheduler can deploy oh, or migrate hosts. From Intel. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, Intel, because mm. it connects down to the hardware. So. <laughs> Uh, I think this is a little bit uh, out of date. So, okay. Open. Possibly. There's the open CIT stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too. Open CIT is, uh, we have some uh, collaboration. Yeah. Uh, with that team. So they are working on, mostly on uh, TPM. Yeah. Uh, TPM related stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of work to do just connecting that, right? <laughs> yeah. Like getting that wired up. Once it's wired up, the policy part comes into play a lot with yep. the, yeah, with like what can you allow or disallow or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, we are also like uh, in the process of starting another new project in OpenStack. Uh, basically, want to provide uh, a a a a, uh, a common management framework for uh, different kinds of like trust computing formats, because uh, in US is mostly TPM, right? So in China, mm -hmm. there's TCM and TGCM, a lot of other like formats. Oh, I didn't and, know that. Yeah, you have to comply. So if you have to like uh, do the development uh, for every single type of this trust computing, uh, it's right. 
really very <laughs> tiresome. Well, it, it can be done, of course, but so we are thinking about like doing a new project that. Um, but one of the uh, feedback we got from um, uh, the security people in OpenSec, uh, uh, actually uh, also from Red Hat, is pretty interesting is that they suggest, uh, so we should not like store all the, for example, the trusted host information via like traditional OpenSec, uh, MySQL or, or, or that type of database because uh, the management layer database is very easily uh, attacked or corrupt. So. Yeah, so where, we, yeah. Well, where would you store it? I think, well, uh, it should be a database of some type, but uh, it cannot like reside on the on the same uh, control node, or, or at least it, it, it should reside uh, in some in its own server or whatnot, like 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 a, a trust zone, something like that. I think it's kind of like a KMS integration. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. So for the OpenCIT, they so they didn't offer like uh, the management level. They just offer a compute agent running on the compute now. Um, I think that's okay for so the time. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, we're just starting to the open shift on open stack is revving up right now. Is it painful? So it, it's very, it's <laughs> painful for them because open shift development moves very fast and so like the installer changes probably right at right now several times a day like you have to constantly reinstall if you want and you might have to make changes and they're finding that very frustrating <laughs> So does OpenShift use like Helm or Ansible? No. <laughs> the okay. new four three point oh is like um, Ansible to a, an unhealthy degree. <laughs> then four point oh is the installer for like AWS is some Terraform. Ah. Okay. I don't know actually what the like bare metal. I guess ironic is that. I don't know what that uses. And yeah, then, is, yeah, open stack bare metal. Okay. Okay, so that for those parts. Then once you, they bootstraps, it's the all operators running on the system itself that sets up the rest. Okay. So <sighs> Okay, I don't have like anything else in my mind I want to discuss today. Yeah, I think, have... do you, I have been, our code or feature freeze is this Friday, so I've been pretty heads down in open shift land. Uh, do you know if anything, else and other parts of Kubernetes have been interesting or particularly uh, relevant? Well, um, I think the, well, this week, the big story is the Renzi, there's a 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, security flaw, and that that's one of the reason I I I I want to see if we can have a chat with the notary or top people next week to see the image or runtime security, and mm-hmm. yeah, and. Um, uh, mm-hmm. What were you saying? Keep yeah. Uh, well, well. Another thing. Well, at least from my Twitter sphere is uh, uh, about the SGX. So there has been several researches uh, coming out that uh, the Intel SGX uh, enclave, enclave. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, it's not uh, secure as most people think. And it's kind of very easily broken, right? Uh, if you know the trick. Um, so some of the, like the 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 the, the shortcomings people find is, uh, for example, the uh, attestation. Uh, the SGX only talks to a uh, third party. Um, uh, for attestation, and at the moment, the only third party available for SGX is Intel server, of course. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's a there's a university team actually do uh, uh, did an uh, exploit on that, so that they can they can like cheat the attestation mechanism to to think of their fake ones are the uh, Intel ones and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so other bad things, including like uh, they require only Intel validated vendor signature. Um, so that means uh, like uh, everyone will need to have Intel's uh, approval to at least uh, to, to, to be uh, authenticated by the SGX in Kyber. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so something like that. So that must be why searches related to Intel SGX show Intel SGX <laughs> block ch- blockchain. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, yeah. There are some uh, pretty interesting paper. Uh, just downloaded and uh, haven't had the time <laughs> to check out. Yeah, I. It's an, so those are two big things. Yeah. It's in, it'll be interesting to see with the the hardware level issues that we're seeing or that have been coming out if there is a push back towards full VM or not or against I guess that could possibly this can cross VMs, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It, it's basically mimicking a host environment yeah. in, uh, like encrypted uh, isolated memory uh, region they call the enclave uh, the sgx so if you can get around that you can basically get around everything yeah it's crazy yeah wow it's interesting yeah. for the run c1 anytime we have one of those it's, SE Linux saves the day again. <laughs> if you had it configured correctly. Which is interesting to me that one, it, it seems to be very, very successful at preventing a lot of attacks. <laughs> but everyone still really doesn't like it because it's difficult to work with. Uh, I know. Maybe I, maybe. Uh, so how, how's the, uh, I know there's a development regarding the rootless containers. Oh. How's that going? Uh, I think. That would be very helpful, at least for the Run-C vulnerability. Yeah, like one of the things I, for that caught up is like user namespaces, right? Yeah. Um, which is, it's like, it feels like it's just 
an issue of pushing things through code wise. Not necessarily, it's pretty close. I'm not sure what else is missing besides the user namespaces. I would have to ask the people working on that and on the run times. Yeah. So if is this a like a separate community uh, or some company is driving it to do this? I think it's well, there are an right. organic effort. Ah, oh, okay, NTT. OpenShift does not run containers as root by default, but that has that runs into some problems. There's also some other really weirdness, some other weirdness in um, like in Linux, like you can't bind to ports below 1024 or something, which is kind of silly. <laughs> so it's nothing to do with what port you're really binding to on the other side. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for to check out the latest presentations. Yeah, there's the other efforts around like GVisor and ah. other hardened containers or um, firecrackers. Cubevert, is that the other one? Okay, anything else from Tisha? Uh, not that I can think of right now. That's all I've got.
Hi. You find something? Nope. Well, I thought I did, but now it's like it's behind a paywall. So <laughs> I don't know if it's something or not. Okay, I think we can wrap up for the day. All right. Yeah, and let's try to have the notary or top people coming over next week. Okay, I know one of the, the guys is in Japan soon. Hopefully not next week, but well, maybe the hour will still work <laughs> since we're... Yeah. Oh, that'll be really early in Japan, I think. Is that what one or two hours? Yeah, I think maybe two hours. Well, so anyways, let's see if if that's possible. We'll see. All right. Okay. I'll try to book that and let you okay. know. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>